All right, gather round, children. Today we're gonna to learn about how to make smoother corners as requested by Chili so that you too can impress all your friends and family. So here's a rough premise. We have this segment here. This is the center segment in the room. We have these portions protruding. And now we have these bits over here and we kind of want to make them a little bit smoother than just a a right angle corner, let's say, you know, there's some sort of a pathway leading that way, perhaps. And so this is all very kind of blocky. And so what can we do? Well, for example, we can move these verts right here, something like this. And if we go to this point and make it a 45, sort of a, or sorry, 135, 135 here, we'll make it like a half half segment here, it already becomes a degenerate vert. If we try to save this, it will give us an error, I believe. Oh, wait, actually it doesn't. Interesting, what if we do this? Now it should give us an error. Well, at any rate, it becomes all buggy and glitchy if you do that. Um, and you don't want that, generally speaking. But you know, you can do this and, and you know, it's slightly smoother, but it's still kind of blocky and you can tell that it's just a segment that has, its that has had its first moved. So what can we do? Well, what we can do is we can, oops, we can delete this segment and we can do a separate insert here and then uh, manipulate this segment's uh, verse instead. Let's actually make it a little slimmer select these verts and now what we can do is we can create this pretty much now this is currently if we look at the top down view it's not quite at a 45 degree angle so what we want is something like this no sorry we want this and then we also want to move up this like so right so we have like a default segment face here uh, and we can do the same thing over on this side and move the spurts to line up and boom. Now we have a, well, slightly smoother looking thing. So instead of just being a right angle corner, we have, we basically have two segments that form a sort of a uh, 135 or, or a 45 degree, which way, whichever way you look at it. And this could, for example, be like a neat little corner energy center. And now we have these two faces here, which kind of have an awkward length. Um, you can tell that the textures don't quite line up with the default uh, alignment. This isn't a huge problem. We can get around that. But what I want to show you is how to actually line up a bevel here, or not a bevel, but a, a decal. So we can, for example, let's, let's pretend that this is an energy center. We will take like an EC sign here. Let's take this one, apply it to the side, and now we want to we want to actually get the the decal right on the middle of this thing. So what do we do? We try to move the offset, and it it doesn't quite line up. So what can we do? Well, we can actually change the alignment. So right now the center alignment uh, basically aligns it to the center of the segment, which also lines up with either the top or bottom alignment. So if we move it down, it also looks the same as it did with the central alignment and same thing with the up alignment. However, what we actually want is we want to line this. Yeah, we want to line this to right. So it lines up with this side over here. And then we rotate it like so. So you can see it, it kind of clips through the ceiling because uh, if you have it aligned to a side, the rotation also takes that into account. And now we can offset the vertical down and boom, it is precisely in the middle of this side, uh, which also makes it in the middle of this these two segments. So that's how you can kind of line up some decals like so. But wait, this isn't what the what the yellow key room in, in the the descent chair were overloaded pack looked like. It looked a little different. It was way smoother. So we'll delete these two segments and I'm gonna quickly show you how this works. So basically, in order to get this thing to be perfectly symmetrical, 
like I showed you, you can kind of manipulate the words by hand and just keep adding segments and make a pretty smooth transition. But if you want to make it symmetrical, we need to use the tunnel builder. So there's a couple of things to note. Each segment that gets inserted into this uh, area will provide two faces to the outer wall. So this needs to be essentially uh, that there needs to be an even amount of segments inserted here. And because this is going to be a 45 degree angle, we're just going to use, oh, sorry, a 90 degree sort of, um, a 90 degree turn, turn rather. Uh, we're going to use, or rather the values need to be four times higher for the per full arc than they are for the segments that this tunnel builder is going to create. So for example, we can do 10 and four. So it's going to create a tunnel that's going to make a 90 degree turn with 10 segments, which means if we have 10 segments going here, we'll have 10 faces on this outer edge, which means we'll have five segments, all kind of pizza slicing uh, this part. So now we'll just do it with the 10 segments to, to kind of demonstrate uh, what it looks like. Uh, so we're going to try to go our direction right. We're going to hit create tunnel and oh look, it's too big. So control Z, let's take it back. And now we have to play around with these values. And I haven't found a very good way to do it consistently every single time. So it just usually takes a little bit of trial and error for me. Uh, okay, 16 is too much. Let's go down to 14. Getting closer, it's probably 12. No, it's not. It's more like 10. There we go. And 10 lines up perfectly. So now you can see these 10 segments have created 10 faces over here, which will give us a pretty smooth little transition. So what do we do now? Well, now we leverage this tunnel. Oops, there we go, let's connect that. Right, so we're gonna start adding segments now. And so I'll add one here. So you can see that this wall pretty much lines up with that one. So what we do is we select this wall and we just connect it and boom, it's good. And then we can just, we'll just, I'll just shift move it so I can kind of fine tune it, hit connect and boom, now it's perfectly connected. And we got one of the, one of the slices. Now you may be thinking, well, do I have to do this like four more times? And the answer is kind of yes. Um, technically copy pasting should work like so. Um, and this, this is fine. I think for the most part, um, I have run into problems with copy pasting, so it might be a good idea to do it manually, but right now it, I mean, it works just fine. And so now we have pretty much the, the smooth corner. So what we do now is we just do, a, I'll do a little default, uh, align, wait, oops. There we go. Accidentally, uh, moved the mouse a little bit when everything was selected. And now what we do is we just delete, uh, delete these segments right here and boom, we have our essentially our little smooth corner. Now, this is a pretty fine, I was gonna say fine grain, but that's, I don't think that's the correct word here. Uh, th this is a, this is a really a, a pretty very smooth wall. So you may, be run, you may run into an issue of, well, what kind of texture should I use here? And what I think generally like to do for these kind of smooth corners is I like to use these very plain textures that don't really have any uh, tiles, unless they're very small tiles. So here you can see right now, I think it's the OM wall 18C. Yeah, and this has, uh, it has a tile per two uh, editor units, so per two meters. And a default segment is four units, so it, it basically has four tiles per default um, segment phase. Now, OM wall 18B is just a very smooth texture. Uh, oops, let's uh, let's undo that and let's just select this wall here. Let's uh, increase the coplanar tolerance a little bit so I can just select them all at the same time with a shift Q. And now OM wall 18B will look something like this. So you can still get the tiles on faces that that you know do well with tiles, uh, but this face like uh, you know face like this with, with very sort of fine. I can honestly fine grain, but but with with uh, with very slim walls. Uh, the, this kind of decal won't really look right. Now, technically what you can do is you can just select all this and do a, uh, a line to select it. And it kind of works. I'm just gonna move these out of the way real quick. 
but you can see that that on this face, for example, it doesn't quite line up with the with the adjacent wall. So what I found is a good idea to do is just use the very plain texture, and then just add um, either a uh, a bevel on on the end of this edge, or a, or even maybe a corner bevel. I'll, I'll just show that real quickly. So we're gonna go corner. Oops, oops. There we go. We're gonna go like, let's say we take the OM corner. Let's say we take this one. This is a pretty nice and subtle one. Oops, go away. All right, I would just align this to the right side and you can see it, it's not perfect. Again, this here is a pretty pretty blocky bit. Um, but this is basically how, how that segment is made. And so now all we really need to do is let's just um, copy this there and then uh, align this to the left side. And this is pretty much how that room uh, in the campaign was made. Now, I believe I used um, six sides. So it was, yeah, it was, it was six segments forming the curve. And then I had three segments forming the, the sort of the inside of the, of the curve, the pizza slices. And if I had, if I used the, uh, if I used three pizza slices for for a uh, smooth corner that connects uh, an eight uh, eight by uh, eight by four, so eight units wide, four units high, so basically like a default segment height, but basically double default segment. Uh, if I had a if I had an eight unit segment connected with a smooth corner using three pizza slices, it actually lined up perfectly with the like the OM wall 18C or, or essentially tiles that um, that go uh, tiles that work for a default segment forming, you know, two by two grids. Um, but here, uh, what we could technically use are tiles that form a four by four Per default segment. So for example, we use the OM ceiling 03E. And you can see it, it, it doesn't quite line up here, but what we can do is we can kind of cheat a little bit and we can use the quarter snap. And oh, now it does line up. Uh-huh, pretty cool. Uh, and that's the beauty of using uh, these um, like uh, smaller tiles is you can pretty much always line them up uh, with the quarter snap. And you can tell they're a little bit stretched out, but you know, it's not a huge deal really. And you can get a pretty, uh, pretty neat little result. So now, if we want to just finish up the room, what we can do is we can basically just uh, copy paste this, um, connect these, same here, connect these, and same here, connect these. All right. So now we basically are getting to the point where we have the room uh, that I had in the campaign, and this is pretty much what it looks like. Now. There was another little detail there. There were these, um, not an indentation, but, but there were these very small segment inserts in the floor uh, that I used in, in, I've actually used them in pretty much every level um, in the pack, but they're pretty subtle. So the way they work is we'll do just a single insert here. And now we have to make the segment that was just added or inserted uh, very slim. In fact, it needs to be right now. It's it's a single unit in height, and we're gonna drop it down to zero point three seven five. So what we do is we we move it up once by point five, and then we do one extra movement with point one two five, like so. And what this does is it gives it exactly the right height for those beveled decals. So for example, uh, let's select the bevels. So we have the OM bevel one, OM bevel two, this one was used not. And this decal, this height here is 0.375. Anyway, I can I can demonstrate it right away. So we'll just select all the uh, the uh, the edges here. Uh, another thing that I like to do is the surfaces that I'm going to bevel, I like to Turn, use this OM wall 19 B texture that looks green by default in the texture list. I remember Hattie actually made uh, a fix for this so you can replace the, the files in your editor that, so that it does look uh, sort of beige or tan. Uh, 
but but right now if i do this what this allows me to do is i can just very easily select all the the green surfaces uh, with uh, with q and then we can then apply the bevel uh, let's get this out of the way align it down uh, repeat it at least twice because we know that the longest face is too wide uh, technically you could optimize this further but i, I just apply the, the, the two repeat u2 to everything edge down adjacent left and right so it does slice the segments at the or it slices the decals at the edges of the segment so adjacent left and right is is the horizontal one and copy one to marked boom we now have these brown bevels all around the floor and i think in that particular room um it also had like one uh, extra insert Oops, let's do it like this. Let's paste it down. So it, it also had one extra in the floor. Uh, we'll just turn that green too for the sake of consistency. And and we can just uh, copy paste the, the bevel from there. Although I believe the bevel was, it was actually a different bevel. It was a light bevel. Um, yeah, it was, it was an OM light bevel 01. So it had the, the sort of the red emissive stripe. Okay. So this is basically what it looked like. So one side had the the key card or the the security key little floaty bit. Um, I think two sides had fans, and then one side had the little viewport to the previous section of the of the level. Now it, it's not quite done yet, so we also need to make the transition into a cave segment. So the way we do this is I, I always like to do a insert one. So this is going to be the cave section. I'm just going to do the same. Uh, paint this uh, side green thing and now I like to use either the warning stripes um, I don't like to do warning stripes here because I'll show you why uh, so if we use the rust edge 03 uh, the thickness is going to be correct actually let's just align that down repeat two adjacent left and right copy one to mark and oh shit if we look at these smooth curves these warning stripes don't line up at all so I, I don't like to use warning stripes uh, for that reason. Instead, what I like to do is I'm, I'll just, oops, I'll go OM edge. Um, I'll show this window real quick too. And we'll go down to OM edge. Um, 11 is nice because it's a 0.5 thickness. So it's pretty pretty cool to do a, a transition segment with this too. But what I like to do is I like to use the thick ones. So for example, OM edge 12B. And if you use that, oh look, it lines up beautifully. So now it's just a matter of, uh, let's do an extra, let's say a, um, let's do a, let's do a two extrusion here. So we're going to select all of this. Uh, we're going to hide all these uh, edges now. So it's nice and plain. We're going to take the rock surface like so. And then we're just going to paint this uh, with a rock surface too. Now, what will happen is only the walls and the ceilings have been painted with rock. Uh, we'll also extend this out a bit, but I'll use a bit of a bigger snap. So let's go something like this. This is basically roughly what it was in the D1L6 in the shareware uh, overloaded pack. These are all aligned. And now what will happen is there's, there's one more little step if you do cave transitions. It's easier to do it in this port because um, We've got to do it in side view. We also want the floors to be caves because if they're not, what happens is, let's say we make a bunch of cave insertions and, oh, look. Oh, actually the center segment also has walls that aren't repainted, but let's just pretend that's not the case and let's only focus on the floor. As you can see, the floor is still the regular floor. Uh, so let's just delete some of these. Right, what we want to do is in the side view, we want to select all of this, go all the way down to the bevel so that we also select uh, the sort of the imaginary floor of the cave sections. And then we repaint those cave also. And would you look at that? If we now do the inserts, look at that. Everything is beautifully cavernous, wonderful. And the floor is also caverns. Excellent. All right, cool. But wait. Technically, there's more. There's also a little bit of tidbit that uh, um, Miasmic was, was wondering about. He was wondering about the cave lights that had this sort of a peachy color. So I'll just show it real quickly. And I believe you also have these cave lights already. It's this peachy one right here. It has 254 red, 
164 green, 109 blue. And then the hue is 22.7. The saturation is actually, you know, only 57. So that's why it's kind of slightly faded out. And the brightness is quite high. But this is the sort of the, the nice warm looking kind of a peachy color, as I named it. Uh, this was the uh, the uh, the cave light that I used quite extensively in the level pack. Okay, cool. So now we know how to make these smooth curves. So what's the next step? Well, to me, the next step was to actually make a sphere. And this one's a little bit trickier. There's a, there's a, there's a few things about that. So I'm just going to quickly uh, delete most of this stuff here. Uh, we're going to go back to a, uh, to a default segment. Let's do this all from scratch. Let's delete this too. Um, oops. Okay, cool. All right. So, I mean, okay, it's not quite a default segment, but you get the idea. But actually, no, let's, let's, let's go, let's go full default. No, let's not go full default because it'll make things a little too tight. So we have this, uh, uh, the segment here, uh, let's just do an eight insert uh, horizontal vertical. Um, cool. So what if we want to make a sphere in the game? Well, first, we need that smooth curve again, but this time we need a sort of a, a vertical one. So here we're going to pull out the tunnel builder again, and instead of going right, we're just gonna go down like that and we already have the right value so it all lines up perfectly excellent oops uh, like so all right cool so we're just going to do the same process again uh, I'm going to quickly manipulate the verts here all right very cool very nice that should connect wonderful all right cool now we just copy paste this real quick pretty simple stuff uh, all right, let's just connect all of this stuff. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's select all these sides. Let's select all these sides and then join all mark. Boom. Okay, we have something that I'm guessing you can already you can already guess where it's going. Right. So now we have <clears throat> these sections here. Uh, let's delete the extra stuff that we don't need right now, just to make it a little oops, make it a little simpler. So now what we want is we want to create another smooth curve, but with these, but with this curve already being used. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all these faces here. We're going to select the tunnel builder again. Let's get this out of the way. Now let's just see what happens if we hit create. Let's see what, what kind of a, all right, we're going down. We don't want that. Um, well, I mean, we could do it with down, but that's not what I'm going for right now. Cool. Let's see what it looks like from the top down. Right. It, it just basically forms like a default segment almost. Not quite. Um, oh, I did it with the lower one. Let's see what happens if I select this one when I hit the create tunnel. Ah, see, now it's way bigger, actually. And I actually do want to use this face here that's closest to the inside of it because this gives me finer control and I want to kind of create almost a, um, a kind of a default segment looking thing. Hang on. Let's select, um, where is it? There we go. Uh, let's tweak the values a little bit. All right. This is too much. I think it actually needs to be nine, right? Yes. I think this lines up perfectly or something that is very close to perfect. I actually have a temptation to do a snap to grid just to see if it shit, it does move. Okay. So here's, here's one of the problem with spheres. Um, the first sphere that I made wasn't actually aligned to, uh, to the grid. And I think there's no real point in trying to align this to the grid, um, too much. It's probably just not really worth it. So you know what I'm going to do instead? What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to make this thing way small. I'm going to make this thing as small as I can. There we go. This is what it essentially looks like. Now, this is basically a three units, three units this way, three units this way. And this is where things get a little bit inaccurate, uh, which is something I personally 
don't really like too much. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to move this face, not with a 0.125 snap, but with a one snap. It basically lines up here. Uh, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, yeah. At any rate, um, we're going to make another insert here now. Three, three. And this is not quite, but we're gonna move it just a little bit to the left. What if we do a 0.125? Yeah, it, it basically lines up. Take this side. It's, it's just ever so slightly not correct. Just, 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 just not quite, not quite perfect. But it's it's very close. That's the thing. Okay. So at any rate, now we do the do the connections in here. And I really wish there was a better method. I just haven't come up with it yet. Maybe there is a better way of doing this. Uh, and I'd be very interested to hear these uh, these ideas concerning that. Yeah, see, now it, it, it lined up and it just slightly bends that thing. Uh, I might be able to kind of fix this a little further, but, but we'll see. So at any rate, now we just move this here. Uh, we'll connect this vert and I'll just select this segment here. Oops. And we'll just do a little bit of copy paste. Oops. One, 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 and one. Cool. And now these are going to just line up nicely. Right. Connect these boys. <clears throat> Actually, I did it the other way around. It needs to be from this side because the sphere, uh, spherical side, is technically perfect right now. So we don't want to mess with that. Cool. Uh, select all these. And join all marked. So this and now should be. Fine. And it basically lines up. Right, so let's delete all this uh, extra chaff here. Cool. So we basically have one eighth of a sphere. Okay. So here's here's really the, the, the tricky bit, right? What do we do with this vert? And I think the answer is, I'm just going to eyeball it one pixel at a time. Like right now, it seems perfect. Like this, I think this is as good as it's going to get, to be quite honest. Um, everything right now, I, th I can't tell if it, I think it's because it interferes with the, with the grid. I think it is actually lined up. Everything, yeah, everything looks lined up pretty much. I wonder if I if I move it all up a bit off the the actual like grid. Okay, yeah, there, there's some funkiness going on here. It's technically not perfect. So here's the thing, right? Once we copy paste all these segments and we connect them, it will be unnoticeable. Um, You'll know that it's technically not perfect, but it it, it really won't be noticeable. Um, I don't think I, 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 we can make it perfect, but maybe we can. I'm, I'm just not clever enough. At any rate, what we can do now is we can just uh, copy paste it if we want to. Oops, we're gonna do it on this side instead. Right, and this is basically what it what it looks like. So you can do that four times, but I'm not actually going to do that four times. We, we have one extra step that I think is actually worth taking. And this is, and I didn't do this with Thunderflex, but I think I should do a insert this way. And I should do an insert uh, this way. Oh no, actually I, I could just uh, shift select this. But this isn't going to be a one unit wide. In fact, it's going to be something like 0.5. Actually, I'm gonna make it point. 25. This is going to be a very sort of fine grain thing. One, two, three. All right, this is a tiny little segment. 
No, actually, screw it. We're, do we're doing 0.5 because I want to use bevels just for uh, just for a cool little effect. Now, what this does essentially is it gives us a segment or a face that is actually aligned to the grid that is either perfectly vertical or horizontal. And this makes the whole copy pasting process essentially much easier and you don't actually have to eyeball it as far as I can tell. Right, so we're just gonna select everything here uh, with a segment select. Uh, we are going to copy paste it from this with the center segment. Cool, and then we're just going to Wait. No. We have to also select this stuff here. Like so. Like this. And then we paste it here. And then we paste it here. And then the final pasting happens without the in between segment, like so. Boom. Right? And now we basically have uh, a sort of a half sphere or a, or a dome. All right, we just select uh, all segments on the side, join all marked, uh, same thing here, join all marked. I think I'm doing this right. Uh, yeah, this, this should be all fine. Right, and this is pretty spherical. I know technically there's a little bit of wonkiness here, but it's, it's. Uh, I wanna say it's not noticeable. Uh, it does irk me a bit too. Uh, but yeah, this is basically what it looks like. And now if we just want to make it uh, into a sphere, what we would do is we would just select all of this stuff uh oh wait no before we do that we're actually we're gonna do one little insert here uh we're gonna extrude um we're not gonna extrude well we're gonna extrude one of course but we're gonna make it a little thinner we're gonna make it yeah we're gonna make it 0.5 as well or no 0.25 right that was the value i was using before no, 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 0.5. Yeah, 0.5. I ended up using 0.5, correct. Yeah, cool. Okay, so now what we can do is we can select all these segments uh, in segment mode, of course, like so. And essentially, wait, hang on. I think I should do this step with a slightly different, a slightly different order of operations. Yeah, I think the the in between segments don't actually need to be added until later. Yeah, let's just let's just get rid of these. Let's just select all of this. Uh, let's select the center. Uh, Control C. Uh, into control V and then we just move this thing down a bit there we go so as you can tell this thing is not actually all that spherical now technically we can move it down and it becomes sort of more spherical but actually not quite um, the reason for that is and I'll show that in a second the reason for that is we essentially have, let's just select all this real quick. I'll just connect it before I'll go on. Join all marked. Right, the reason for that is we have this, essentially this uh, central rod here. And this central rod could actually be smaller. And in, uh, in the first time Thunderflex, I did make it much uh, thinner. This here is actually surprisingly large, which may be useful, but may also not be so useful. The problem with it is it gets 
trickier to make the sphere if you want to make the central rod smaller because the tunnel builder only gets so small. Uh, and that's actually how I made the first one. The, the order of operations was slightly different and I made the central rod first and I made it very small. I also had to freehand it because the tunnel builder does not allow you to go for a smaller radius uh, than four for X, Y, and Z which means there's only so small you can make the sphere. Now, the way you can kind of get around this is you can make the entire sphere just way bigger so that the, the central sort of column doesn't uh, interfere with it so much. Because if we select it right here, well, you can see parts of it. Um, I'm actually gonna do it in, in this view here. Um, you, can, you can quite easily see, right? This is basically how you make the spheres. It's never going to be perfect. Uh, I mean, of course, on paper, you may be thinking, well, you know, let's just like move this up by a couple of units, right? And then it's totally slightly more spherical, right, guys? Um, that's sort of true. Um, like this is like 0.25. And if, if we look at it from the side, what the fuck is going on with this thing? Why is this slanted? Wait, is this because of the copy paste? Oh yeah, it must be because of the copy paste, right? Like if we if we, we could like fine tune it back a bit. <laughs> Whatever, like it's barely noticeable, but but this is one of the little artifacts that happens because because we, we did have this thing be slightly off, and this is what it what it in reality what it, it looks like. It's going to be offset by like a very minuscule amount. But yeah, if we look at it from the side, then now it's just you know ever so slightly more spherical because we moved up that uh, that face by just that 0.25 bit. We can actually just move it down by like 0.125, and it's 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 even slightly more subtle. But this is basically what it looks like. Uh, it's not perfect. If you make the sphere way bigger, then you can of course essentially hide uh, this face, which is basically flat. Um, let's move. Let's reduce the tolerance. Yeah, right. So this part is is effectively flat, um, or rather this like circle here. But yeah, this is basically how you make something that's pretty spherical. And if we wanted to make, uh, if we wanted to make another sphere around it, what we would do is we could just go a few steps back and when we are making uh, the sphere, we would just, uh, and, use the tunnel, and using the tunnel builder, we would just add like an extra segment to the outside layer. So it just creates like an extra, uh, extra sphere on the outside. So that's how you pretty much make this thing. Um, and that's what it essentially looks like. So I hope it helps and uh, co-impress everybody. Bye-bye.